Hi friends. I get asked on a regular basis if using a weighted vest is necessary for helping to prevent bone loss and work with people that, that are trying to improve bone density if they have osteopenia or osteoporosis. And this is kind of a, a complex question because sometimes there is good evidence and sometimes there's not so good evidence. And I stumbled across on my feed, as you know, once you say something out loud, social media sends you lots of information on this. And I saw somebody who was selling a weighted vest, who was promoting treatments for people with osteoporosis, and who was highlighting research to back up their claims in this product that they're selling. So I took the moment to just kind of look at that research and see, hey, you know, maybe I was going to learn something new or find out something different than what I already understood here. And so there were three studies, and one of them was over 30 years old, so I actually just kind of threw that one out because that's quite a few years ago. Uh, the other two are in the 20 years old range, but I took a look at both of those. And so in the first study, there were 18 women. So again, this is a small group involved in this study. And nine women, nine, were assigned to the exercise group, and the other nine were in the control group. And the exercise group, this was a nice long study, so that's one thing I really liked about it. They went on for a long time, over seven months, and in the exercise group, they exercised three times a week for one hour supervised exercise with a weighted vest on doing stair climbing, walking, strength training, and balance exercise. Wow, doesn't that sound a lot like brick house bone style exercises, but they all had a weighted vest. The other group did no exercise. Well, surprise, surprise, the exercise group with the weighted vest did have increased bone mineral density at the hip. They were also stronger, had better balance, and had lost some weight compared to the control group. But we cannot say absolutely that it was the vest in the intervention that made the difference. It is adding load, it is adding weight, but would a group, a third group that only did the same exercises but didn't have the vest, would we have seen a similar result in them? And we just don't know because that study didn't include that. So this to me is very inconclusive as direct evidence that a weighted vest is necessary when we know that certain types of exercises are also beneficial. Now the second group was also a very long study. It actually also had 18 postmenopausal women. Nine of them were assigned to the exercise group and nine of them just did their normal activity, not doing the exercise intervention. And the exercise group did 30 minutes of weighted vest exercises, including jumping exercise. That was the, the impact that they did was jumping exercises over 32 weeks in the year, and they follow them across five years. So weighted vests with jumping or impact, so added load and adding impact. And yeah, after five years, they did see an increase in bone mineral density at the hip compared to the control group that had a decrease in bone mineral density. Does this also tell us exclusively that the weighted vest was a difference? No because we didn't have another part of the study, the third group that did the jumping exercises without the vest. So we can't eliminate that variable to tell us for sure that the vest helped or the vest didn't help. Now, there was another study done in 2013 that did use this control arm. And this study was done again on postmenopausal women, this time with osteoporosis, looking at bone turnover markers and bone mineral density, and they did sub-maximal aerobic test, uh, exercise, so like walking on a treadmill. And they did this uh, for six weeks only, so very short duration of test. Again, not long enough for what we really know the time it takes to build bone. But they did have three groups. They had the exercise group doing the aerobic exercise with the vest on. They had those doing the aerobic exercise with no vest, and then they had those that are not doing the exercise at all. And they definitely showed that both exercise groups had better performance in their bone turnover markers and in their bone mineral density than the non-exercise group, but they could not determine in their conclusion that the vest group did better than the exercise without the vest group. They did say that they saw better balance tests on the group that had the vests, so that's a nice added bonus for that. 
they did show a slight improvement in bone turnover markers that might have showed a better result if the tests had gone on longer, if they had a longer time frame for their study. But we don't know. We can't say this for sure. So how I look at weighted vests are, it is adding load. Load, whether you're carrying it in your hands, whether you're wearing it as a vest, whether you're putting it on your back in a barbell, load on our bones is helpful for stimulating bone growth. But not everybody is at the same level and the same functional ability. And so I precaution anyone that asks me that if you have had a fragility fracture, such as a spinal compression fracture, if you have severe osteoporosis, if you have severe degenerative disc disease and spinal stenosis, as well as if you've already developed that hyperkyphosis or hump in your back, signs that you may have had a compression fracture already, I don't recommend a vest in that case. And for some people, it's going to make increased tension in the muscles in their neck or back. For other people who are relatively active, who've been exercising a long time, who want to add a little load, who've maybe done ruck marches even before they had their osteoporosis diagnosis, sometimes a weighted vest will be a great additional tool in all your tools that you have to help increase your bone mass. Adds a little variety, gives a little stimulus. Maybe it helps you train for something you want to do like a backpacking trip. So for some people, I think a weighted vest can be helpful. I don't know definitively that it is the number one thing you need to do, but it is part of the many different avenues that we choose to help strengthen our bones in certain circumstances for the right people. Hey, if you found this helpful information, please share it with others. You're not the only one looking for an answer to this. And if you haven't followed my YouTube channel, please subscribe where I produce lots of information, exercise videos, and share as much free content as possible to help support people on their bone health journey. I'm Dr. Lisa Moore. I'm a physical therapist and a specialist in cancer rehab and osteoporosis exercise. Thanks for watching.